Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a guide on Lens Island. Some tips that I wish I'd knew before I started playing. Not a lot of tutorials in Lens Island, apart from teaching you how to gain resources and a few basics of your storage and how you actually store your resources. So here is some really obvious stuff that you might have missed. All roads lead to home. It's advisable to build your first base somewhere close to a road. There's no way markers, there's no map markers or anything in the early stages of the game, so it can be quite easy to get lost. Lens Island is pretty large. So have a good explore. You can build almost absolutely anywhere on the game's island as well. And it's definitely worth checking out Bridgewater, the NPC town where you'll be able to buy and trade all sorts of goods, resources, and get yourself new gear, items, and weapons. You will need to repair the bridge first, of course, but it doesn't take much, only some sandstone and some normal stone, and that's easy to find using your pickaxe that you have. If you want to sleep throughout the night, you can go back to where you spawned, and you should be able to do so at your little camp or tent. Don't panic too much about building a base straight away. Find that perfect spot to build, and like I said, I would aim for somewhere close to a road. If you're thinking you might just swim to the NPC town, well that won't work. You actually need the bridge to teleport you to it. Instead, if you do dive in and keep swimming, you'll eventually hit Lonely Island. This isn't such a bad thing either. You'll basically find a bunch of bottles which you can use for glass and there might even be a weapon or an item that you can get. So if you want a slightly better sword with some actual abilities to fight, then go and do this and grab the Marlin. Be warned though, you might want to swim exactly the way that you come. If you keep going in a random direction, eventually you'll hit a mysterious island with creatures. There's no penalty for being in the water. You're not going to die just because you're swimming for a long time and there's definitely no sharks just yet. That's a different story once you actually make it to the island though. If you're very early in the game, you'll come across a bunch of creatures. Unless you've already got pretty used to the combat, you may find this a bit of a struggle. Especially when this big dude comes at you. They can be killed, I did manage to do one of them, but there is another, so it does look like there might be a spawn on this island. In the end, I didn't stick around to find out too much longer. I decided to jump off and hopefully swim back to safety. And that's exactly what will happen if you swim down. You should hopefully hit you back to your island. Obviously on the way or any chance you get, make sure you take down some of the barrels. That's going to be your early game getting scrap and gold. And a short swim across, you'll be back on your safe Lens Island. It's pretty easy to start building a base, but when it comes to actually getting your crafting bench, that's when you can start upgrading and unlocking more recipes. You can upgrade your crafting bench to different levels, and that's what will unlock a lot of these hidden items. Building a bed, of course, like all good survival games, will allow you to save progress and sleep through the night, and it's definitely worth doing. However, do note, the days are pretty short, so if you're setting yourself some kind of challenge, make the most out of gathering them resources, and head back to your base where hopefully you've lit something at night time, and then that way you can do stuff during the night. Don't bother eating just before bed either. You'll notice that when you sleep, you'll regain a portion of your health, so it might be just enough to get you to full status. Although, obviously, if you want to maintain your regeneration, if you've got a full health bar or more close to it, you will keep regenerating your health. If your food bar underneath your health has gone empty, that's when you're going to keep losing your health to a certain point. But unlike a lot of survival games, you're not going to die simply because you run out of food. It just means that you'll only have half health. As you explore the cave of Lens Island, remember it respawns the stuff that's in there eventually every day. So any items that you gain, it will have to be got again if you go in or leave anything on the floor. And obviously, if you die while you're on a cave run, you won't take any of the resources that you've mined. So play it safe, get small amounts and head to the exit rather than lose any of the stuff that you've already got. If you have taken a few pieces of damage from some of the enemies in here, then make sure you light these big special furnace lights. These are going to actually replen your health when you stand close to them. So it might even be worthwhile kiting a bunch of enemies so that you can regain your health while you're fighting. They do require coal, quite a lot of it, and that's one of the most precious resources you'll find in Lens Island in the early stages. You need coal pretty much for every sort of crafting recipe in terms of benches, furnaces and more. But don't confuse the big lights with the small ones. These are more or less just to light the way and have a marker. I don't think they necessarily actually replen your health. Of course, your health does regenerate, as I've mentioned, once you've got food in your belly slowly over time, but the closer you are to one of them big fires, the quicker it will do so. 
Take out spawners as quickly as you can. There should be a lot of these all throughout the caves and this is what you need to do if you want to make sure you don't get overwhelmed. It can be pretty tough, the larger ones especially, especially when you've got some of the demigorgons here attacking you at the same time. So try and line them up so they're all in the same direction. It's at these moments that you really should be saving your food and go ahead and munching on it to replenish your health in a quick fix. It can be a bit of a pain in the ass trying to work out exactly what node will have certain resources as they all look pretty much the same in the dark. Speaking of that dark, make sure you don't actually jump into it. You can fall to your death and it will take a big chunk of your health. It doesn't wipe you out completely, so do bear that in mind. It's not the end of the world if you accidentally do fall off as long as you've got enough of a health bar. Your workbench will have a limited amount of new tools and weapons that you can craft, but as I said, you can go ahead and buy a lot of this stuff as well, or even better in the town. So if you're someone that just prefers combat, you could keep doing cave run upon cave run, getting enough gold and scrap to hopefully go and then buy and trade stuff in town for new weapons, or you can farm a lot and hopefully get enough resources to then go and do the same thing. The prices aren't great in the NPC town of Bridgewater or Pirate Town, but it is a viable way depending on what game style or play style you prefer. You'll pretty much find a merchant for every single resource in the game that you need more or less at the beginning, so it's definitely worthwhile taking a look at this early on. And some of the weapons might be a bit expensive in terms of some of their rarer resources, but there's a few that you can find that will be a bit cheaper to buy. Most of the weapons aren't bought using gold, they're actually bought using resources, so you will have to do a bit of farming or a lot of selling and buying. There's a ridiculous amount of different types of weapons and tools that you can go and buy from traders and you simply click on the items available on the benches rather than talk to the NPCs. You can even buy a home inside the NPC town if you really want to live a bit closer to some of this stuff. So gain a bunch of resources quickly as well, this is why you explore the island first, you can actually dismantle a bunch of the ruins that you find. Not every single one, it does look like some of these will be used for NPCs in the future, like you'll find a little fishing dockyard, but there are some places that you can go. Be aware though that some of these items, you do have to make sure when you dismantle them that you are going through the different stages. On the left hand side of the build menu, You'll notice you've got a different layer section, so do make sure you go through the different layers and you remove every single piece, as I found that some of these pieces were actually hidden until I actually went through every layer. I think this is explaining why I couldn't actually remove some of these pieces, because they actually had stuff still attached to them above. So always remove downwards and keep going through the layers until you've recycled every single piece. Or carry on building. You might like this location and might want to make it your base. You can go ahead and add more building pieces to it. A little note about storage, and it does tell you in a tiny little info piece or tutorial, is that you can swap your weapons out before you start adventuring through the cave. So if you've got maybe mining materials or like an axe on you, well you're not going to need an axe for chopping trees in the cave, but you might need your shield, pickaxe and food. So make sure you've got the right stuff for the right time. Although your food doesn't actually go anywhere if you remove it from your hotbar, it will simply go back into your main storage menu, and you can pull food whenever you want into your hotbar to eat. You can't do the same for your weapons or tools though, so basically make sure your hotbar is usually filled up with your tools and weapons. And when you start going into a dangerous area, make sure at least one of the spaces has got some food for quick easiness. You'll pretty much only need a pickaxe, a sword and a shield if you're lucky enough to have bought one or found one. Of course a big part of Lens Island is about farming, so make sure you get some farm crop plots down as quickly as possible. Planting your berries will obviously give you enough food in a couple of days and as long as you've watered it since you've unlocked the watering can you should have plenty of food on tap in the future. I've not delved deeper enough into the flowers and what they can offer other than knowing that certain tools and weapons you will need certain flowers if you want to buy them. So don't dismiss growing roses or any of the other flowers in the game as just purely pretty. You will need some eventually to go and get some different types of tools or weapons. But yeah, definitely grow some fruit first and then work on flowers next. If you're having trouble finding wheat, you can go and buy some in town as well. And eventually you should be able to unlock a mill and that's how you're going to get flour, which you're going to need for a bunch of stuff, including baking. The furnace should be the next thing you unlock after you've got your crafting bench. I wouldn't bother with the actual oven until you do get some of that flour. It's a bit of a weird one, but you can see here it needs the flour to make into bread. But making the actual flour is impossible unless you've got the actual mill. Now I haven't actually unlocked the mill, I can only presume it's behind the upgrades of the workbench once you've fully upgraded that. 
So basically the oven is useless until you get the meal or you've got some flour. And I couldn't find any flour to buy. That's probably one of the least resources I could find. I found bread, I found flowers, and I found obviously the wheat in the NPC pirate town, but no actual flour to make my own bread. So yeah, a bit of a weird upgrade. Really, when you buy or unlock something, it should have the ability to make or craft something straight away, not have to then go and upgrade something else just to get going. Unless there's something I've missed, do let me know if I have. When it comes to watering your plants, you only really have to water them like once a day. And in fact, you don't even have to do it more than that. I only watered my crops at least maybe once and that was it. They grew after a couple of days. But yeah, the well is going to be a lot quicker and easier to get your water rather than running anywhere else for it. So you might need to make that after you've made your furnace. You can get different types of watering cans in the future as well. You can upgrade them or unlock better versions. But the most basic one is probably where you're going to be starting off with. If you're wanting to earn some gold to buy certain things, you can go ahead and play Blackjack. There is an NPC pirate that will give you a game. And I do believe in the first few games that you try, it's kind of rigged to give you a win just to show you what goes on. So maybe bet a bit more than you think you might in your first few games. He also has his own sets of different armor that you can buy as well, but I definitely think it's worth giving at least one go to Blackjack. Look out for secret little areas that you may need to upgrade to go and access, like this one where I've got repaired a ladder. I find the controls of Lens Island a little bit difficult, but it is a bit of an older school way, so you boomers out there I'm sure will find it easy, who are used to playing PC games like this, like Diablo or etc. But yeah, it definitely took me a while, so pay attention to what you're doing with the keys, and remember you can swap them around so that you can move with WASD rather than the mouse. But the creator did say it is much better to just get used to that way and that's pretty much the optimal way to play Lens Island at the moment. Although you can change it if you want to and hopefully control support will be incoming. That one wasn't really a tip, just a heads up. And that is pretty much it for me. I hope that's given you an idea of what to expect a little bit with certain things and basically what I didn't realise a bit early. My next set of guides are going to be much more succinct and small focusing on individual little bits and bobs and I hope you're enjoying the game. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below and I'll see you rat bags later.